how do you grow a small account? Um, a small account, my definition of a small account is anything under a thousand dollars. I mean, that is a small account as far as trading goes. A thousand dollars is a small account. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can lose a thousand dollars very easily. And what makes it easy to lose is the fact that you win some trades. So you think you're cool. But without some of these strategies, what will happen over the subsequent trades is you may lose more than you've made. And at the end of the day, it's so easy to blow out your account. I know all about that. So let's move into the first slide. Adjusting. So three ways to grow your account. So this is my version of three ways to grow your account. What, three things I wish I really understood when I started. Use no more than 20% of your account. So what I mean by that is anything up to 20%, whatever works for you. If you want to be super conservative on a $500 account, then don't use any more than um, uh, $50 to trade. Um, if you want to go up to 10%, you know, 15%. But all in all, if you have $100, you don't want to trade with 80, 80 of those dollars. You probably want to keep those $80 in some kind of savings account, some kind of uh, interest-bearing account, and then you want to focus on trading with a 20. Okay, so let's move on. So it says following the 1% rule means you can withstand a long string of losses. And this 1% rule simply means uh, if all you're trading is 1% of $100, that means you're trading $1 each trade and you get 100 opportunities to turn your $1 into $2 or your $1 into $3. As compared to if you trade with 50% of your account, you only have two opportunities to make those two trades work. Okay, so assuming you have larger winning trades than losers, you'll find that your capital doesn't drop so quickly. Now, see this, this statement down here says a lot because it is assuming that you're a seasoned trader. It is assuming that you understand the emotions that go into a trade. It is assuming that you are a disciplined trader and you've developed good trading habits. It's assuming that you take your profits on the uptick. It's, it's assuming a lot. So assuming, that's why it says assuming, you have larger winning trades. So that is what we all want to get to. We want to get larger winning trades. Easier said than done. So how do we achieve it? So the first way we achieve this is try your best not to use more than 20% of your account, whatever that means to you. If it means 1%, then use 1% of your account and stick with it. If it means 10%, use 10%, stick with it. I think at this point I can show my spreadsheet. Oh, I love this spreadsheet. I'm going to take a little time to explain this spreadsheet um, that I put together. So we're assuming we have an account size, let's $100 or, you know, a small account, right? If you use 10% of your account, so that means if you use $10, if you use 10% of your account, you'll get 10 opportunities to put on trades. Assuming you have a one to four win loss ratio. So that means out of four trades, you win one. Then you get to win two trades. Assuming you have a win loss ratio of one to three, that means you're getting kind of better at this game you put three trades on and you're bound to win one, then you have three opportunities to win. If you use 20% of your account, so we're, we're using uh, progressively more and more of our account with 20% guys. So we're doing some math here with 20%, you get five opportunities to put on a trade. So you get fewer opportunities than if you use a smaller percentage of your trade. You get five opportunities, assuming you have a one to four win loss ratio, then you, uh, out of those five trades you put on with a one to four win loss ratio, you'll win one. 
the hope is that that one you win is a larger amount than the three you lose. Now we're going to move into how we make that happen. But I want you to look at from 30% onwards. <laughs> so now you have $100, you're trading with 30 bucks. With $30, you have three attempts, right? To use 30, uh, $30. You have three attempts. But because your win-loss ratio is one to four, the chance of a win is very slim to nothing. Because with a win, one to four win-loss ratio, it means you put on four trades, you win one. And as you can see, the greater the percentage of your trading account that you put on a trade, the, the, the lower the chance that you will come out with a win. And there's always a temptation, right, to have, say, you have $500 and they say, oh, this stock or this coin is a sure winner and it's been mooning and, and everybody's jumping on it. Uh, yeah. And then you put 50% of your money on it. But that is the point at which this baby decides to retrace and it retraces with your money. And a retracement, which is a pullback. Uh, can easily lead to a reversal. And there goes 50% of your trading account. You gotta build good trading habits, which is one reason why they say 90% of traders fail because people are trading without having developed any habits. So some of these habits I've tried to put down here to practice on a paper trading account. That is so important, especially if you've just learned a new strategy. So there's so many strategies out there, right? There's breakout strategy, there's higher highs, there's the Bollinger Band strategy. There's so many ways in which you can enter into, an, uh, into a trade or, or exit. Practice them on a paper trading account. The one paper trading account I used is TD Ameritrade, which I know is available to US traders. I'm just not sure about um, traders outside of the US, but if you Google and search, I'm sure, oh, TradingView. TradingView definitely has a paper trading option. So a demo account, same thing. Review all your trades, okay. A losing trade, it's important to know what made you lose that trade. If you don't know what made you lose that trade and you keep on trading, you will keep on repeating whatever it is you did in the previous trades that made you lose the trade. So always review your trades, like go over your trades. You've lost a trade. Maybe you got thrown out. Your stop loss threw you out too soon. Then you know that, okay, maybe your stop losses are too tight. Maybe you need to widen your stop loss. And usually when you do that, you're given the, you're given price action of, of whatever trade you're in the opportunity to breathe because price action will run up. Then it will come down. Then it will run up and you don't want you don't want in its running down that it throws you out every single time. So it's important to know where to set your stop losses. Um, and if you're setting them so tight, then that could be one reason. Then, then you learn that and then you try and figure out how to improve setting your stop losses. And it's important to learn something from each trade, because if you can learn something from each trade, you're learning about your trading style. Trading and emotions go together. So you're in a trade and it's mooning and you're up 20%. And then this thing pulls back and suddenly you're down 5%. If you haven't learned to train your emotions to understand that this is part of trading and you allow yourself to get overly excited or overly concerned about your 5% loss, then there's a tendency to exit the trade and as, and as soon as you exit that trade out of fear that it's going to take away all your, all your all your capital boom that baby starts running up yes so know if that's something you, you're constantly doing then you know to work on it 
Use small leverage for those of you who are trading margin accounts, futures account. For the first, my first three years of trading, I did not trade leverage. I was so scared of all the stories I heard about trading margin and you know how you can lose all your account and even owe. <laughs> and um, so I didn't do that. But if you are into it, and I don't really recommend for newbies to jump into margin trading, futures trading, uh, you want to stay with spot trading as much as possible, then use small leverage. Just because your trading platform will allow you to 100x a trade, that means using 100 times uh, the money you put into the trade. So you put a dollar into the trade and your trading platform allows you to 100x it. So to trade it as a hundred dollars doesn't mean you should use that all that opportunity. That's like just because your credit card gives you a credit limit of eighty thousand dollars doesn't mean you run out and spend eighty thousand dollars and so you need to learn to practice to use the leverage that you can handle the the greater the leverage then the tighter is your liquidation so you'll get to your liquidation price sooner uh, you know if trade goes against you and, and you'll be thrown out of, out of your trade and lose everything because when when your trade is liquidated you lose everything and so you want to really control your leverage. And as a newbie, you really want to start with maybe 2x, 1x, 3x, and slowly, slowly, you know, move that up. The next point, put 80% of your capital in safe investment. Oh, this has worked marvelously for me. My first couple of years trading, I wasn't doing that. If I had $100, I was trading $100. If I had $500, I was trading $500. Um, but after so many, having, having, having experienced so many losses, I realized that, you know what, if I have $500, I'm going to go put 250 away in my savings account. I'm going to go put $300 away in my savings account. And these accounts, Acorns is one of them and M1 is another one. And I have a bunch of them, um, that I, I set up recurring, uh, recurring deposits with the, with many of these accounts. So basically money hits my account, my bank account, but because I've set up these, my savings accounts to just withdraw set amounts at different points of the month, then what I actually have available to move on to my crypto platform is already reduced. So that's the way I helped myself not get tempted to put all my cash into trading I like this last point because um, these last few weeks I have been making quite a few videos on cryptocurrency wallets and how you can actually make money by keeping your cryptocurrency in certain wallets so when you do that two things are happening you are definitely you have your money on uh, in a wallet where you're earning interest and secondly you can actually take out a loan against your crypto assets it's a more risky investment but uh, it's good to know that somebody out there would like to use my cryptocurrency holdings to trade with and they're going to give me interest for me loaning them my cryptocurrency so watch my videos, even the video I put up maybe last week, Tuesday also was on Celsius. I used two, two of these uh, cryptocurrency wallets that actually allow you to take loans out against your holdings. So check that out. At this point, this is a hard one, but again, we're developing good trading habits. It's actually hard to take profit on the uptick. So on the uptick, we have this stock or we have this crypto coin. It's mooning. It's just jumping, you know, 5%, 10%, 15, 20, 30%. It's just going up. That is the time to sell. It's so hard to do because, um, you know, if you haven't trained yourself to know that it's mooning, but it's going to pull back. And you don't know, and I don't know when it's going to pull back. We use our indicators to help us get a little bit in the know, but anything can happen. You know what? Something that indicators cannot do for you, 
is it cannot alert you to when some news item is going out and that's called a catalyst you have uh, elon musk he's doing it he goes on and he'll tweet something about doge and that baby will run up then he'll tweet again then it'll dump those are things you can't you cannot control so if whilst you're still seeing green you learn to take some profit and that's a very good habit so basically what you're doing is this first thing here you're selling into resistance you always always sell into resistance you have to know your resistance points you have to know these uh supply and demand levels uh again if you're not familiar with support and resistance check out my channel i've made quite a few videos on it and i believe i have a playlist i'm not too sure but i i think i have a playlist on support and resistance and i make sure i only put like two or three videos in my playlist so it's easy and quick for you to go through everything you need to know on that topic i i do not trade without support and resistance because if something is mooning you have to know that there is a resistance level guys if you don't know resistance level simply means they're sellers sellers selling bots have been set up at a certain price level meaning as prices come in and get into that point boom the selling bot will start selling and price will dump price will retrace or price could reverse and so before you get to your resistance level you want to practice the habit of taking profit but as a new trader i encourage you to always make sure you have your stop losses in and you see this last point, I had a mentor when I started um, trading and he was big on this last point here. Bank your profits regularly, period. So you have a $100 account and you're up 120. Remove the $20, bank it. And I know it's easy to say, I want to turn my 100 into 200. So you leave your 20 on and it can work. So the next day, your 120 is up 140, your 140 is up 180, but because of your win-loss ratio, because no trader makes constant wins, somewhere in those trades, you are going to hit a losing trade and it can wipe out all your gains of the previous trades or the previous days or the previous weeks. But if the money wasn't there in the first place, because you've trained yourself, I'm always going to have a hundred dollars. The minute you make $130, remove the 30, put it in your bank account, come back again, start again with a hundred. I find it pretty difficult to do that because, you know, you can take bigger positions with more money and you can see quicker profits with more money put on your trade. So the greed factor has to be controlled. Somebody. Well, that's all folks. I hope you've learned something from this video. And if you have, the only thing I ask is that you hit that like button, comment below because I do use your comments to better inform me of what other content to create. Share with your friends and family. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, but most importantly, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you get my videos as soon as I upload them. And I'll meet you in the next video.